Let's work the dealers. Um, so a day in the life of working the dealers, right? Toyota Deerfield Beach. Uh, let's go this way, avoid the bushes. I don't want you to have to hop that thing. <laughs> As you can see, new cars, extremely limited. There's three and maybe a couple on the pad. Over there is the pre-sold units. Most of these dealers nowadays, they get a truck in and that truck sold. So they don't even hit the lot. How many cars you got today? No idea. <laughs> going there, you gotta figure it out. That's it. We're gonna walk to the back first, check out the pre-details, and then we'll go to the front, do a key audit for the new for the used cars in the front line. What's a pre-detail? Uh, that's when you do a few photos of the car, depending on the dealer. It could be four, could be up to you know eleven um, of the car before it gets through detail when it's on trade so just a few photos basically just to get the car online what that does for the dealer is you know it shows that the car is in stock it gives the consumer something to look at um, you know while they're searching through the websites so it shows them a little bit about you know what the car is but just basic pictures a few shots of the outside of the car now most important thing is to figure out exactly what we need to do. So I'll pull the dealership up here on my app. Change the filters to zero picks. Now we got some older age units and some newer units. They put some over here and they put some in the back. So let's go over here first. The most important thing about pre-details is knowing cars. It gets very difficult to find cars without keys if you don't know what they look like. So if you don't know what a Corolla looks like, you have trouble. Or an old-fashioned Optima or a TSX. You gotta know your cars. You gotta know your cars. Even better if you know your body styles. If you know that this is a Honda Civic or an Accord, probably a Civic, circa 94, you know, if you know what your body styles look like, it helps even more. But most importantly, is really basically just to know your cars. So like if I go through my list, I got an Altima, Tucson, Escape, Camry, Corolla, Highlander, Avalon, CRZ, CRV, Tacoma Trex, Tacoma 500, and a C-Max. So, and also have a kind of a good memory, <laughs> if you can, uh, to memorize what cars you got on your list because if you can do that it makes it easier to find the cars so I said I had an Altima that's an Altima so this might be one of the cars five ninety seven yes it is all right now this car it's probably going to auction. You see that uh, that red sticker? That is their auction sticker. But as a photo service company, until that car is off my list, it's getting photos. So we're gonna knock some photos out of it real quick. Sometimes dealers are like, oh, well don't shoot the cars, they're going to auction. And then something happens, something falls through car ends up staying in the inventory and then they complain that we don't have photos on it even though it was going to the auction that happened so we adopt a mentality of just shooting it regardless now this car if you check it out Derek on the back check the back out it's got plates so with a car like that that has plates on it that's in trade Generally, we're going to skip the, the larger back shots, so the three quarters, because you don't want to get a plate in the, in the shots. So I swapped out the back three quarters to do a wheel shot and a trim bag shot kind of tied up so we can avoid getting plates online. I've been in situations where someone shot plates on pre-details, mainly in Texas, because they have a lot of plates they, and they keep their plates on the front and the back. But uh, 
they've shot that and those plates hit the internet and then people that trade in their cars see their plates or their old plates on the internet and they call in to complain about it so you want to avoid shooting plates at all costs to the best of your abilities anyways that was the only one I see back here no Avalon uh, I think I do it uh, no so I say I have an Avalon but it's a 2019 so one thing that kind of sticks out when you're looking for pre-details is cars without plates that Ultima has plates so it's kind of a throw off but like that Avalon doesn't have plates I know I had Avalon on my list but I also know the Avalon on my list is a 2019 whereas that's probably an 08 so that's why it's good to know body styles too because if you know body styles you don't have to waste your time looking at cars that you're not going to look for or that are uh, shootable it's the next one now this one it's definitely still pre-detail but you can tell that's kind of going through detail they put tire shine on this car but I don't know if they're gonna put this car through service because some of the tires look a little worse for the wear so definitely hasn't been all the way through detail yet though that's way to tell is by looking at the floorboards but yeah it's coming through but it'll be through in a little bit probably in a couple days I don't think I have that one All right, a lot of times when I'm you know, going for walks between the cars, there's distance. I'm going to keep reviewing my list to see what cars I have left. Another good thing about working dealers a lot, especially the same dealers. Yeah, this one's not my list. So it's possible to have more than one white Camry out here at a Toyota dealership. But uh, yeah, another good thing about working the same dealers multiple times is that you kind of get to know the inventory a little bit and you know which cars you might have shot already. So, like that CRV, I have one on my list, but I know I shot that last time I was here. Number six, that one needs pretty details. I almost lost the camera guy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sienna almost made you roadkill, man. Uh. Oddly enough, you can drive fast at dealerships if they don't have speed bumps. <laughs> Let's try not to die today. <laughs> so, uh, Mercedes, no, the cord. No. This Highlander I might have. No. It's a black one, 2017, yeah. Also, you see the WS? That generally means wholesale as well. So some dealers write that on the windshields. Not all dealers are the same. Every dealer is a little different about how they do that stuff, but uh, you can definitely swap up. Got here one Corolla. I got a red Corolla. Yeah, that's not it. Okay, let's keep walking. Now, there's probably a couple cars that are inside the service area. I have one black Highlander, so this actually might be the Highlander I'm looking for. But uh. If you got cars inside the service area, you generally want to skip them. You don't want to do them. Last thing you want to do is shoot a car on a lift. It's not exactly its best angles. Yeah, this is the Highlander. This one's also got plates, so another throw off. Uh, 
Okay. Cool. That's all she wrote. Let's go to the front line. Occasionally there might be some cars over here too, but you know, I'll do a quick spot check if I see anything that sticks out. No, no, this is an open route. So we got a couple open routes in Broward that we're currently hiring for. Um, this route is actually a combination of both. So I'm covering technically both the routes. So we're gonna do a physical walk of the front line instead of a key audit. Usually I do key audits, but. What's the front line? Anything that's uh, ready to go, detailed, especially for used cars. You have a new car front line too, but I mean, we generally don't consider new car front lines because we don't do pre details of new cars. So there's only a front line when it comes to new cars. Used cars, there can be a front line and pre details in the back. So front line cars, just cars that are ready to go, full sets, detailed and all. Pre solds. So every dealer is kind of, most of us are pretty organized with their front line. Over here, it's pretty much everything in here is the used car front line. So we're going to do a physical walk. Anything that might need label replacements or photos and labels. I will get now. Change the filters, 0 to 100. And let's walk. 0 to 100 photos. Wow. <laughs> the car's got dot on it, so I'm guessing it's just sold. For some reason, you tell them to take that dot off. It's weird. Hey, so this car needs labels, stickers, like that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now this dealer gets Spanish and English buyers guides. So a little different. Yeah, a little different than most. So like this car has pre details on it. Well, it's got four photos. I. Uh, it doesn't look like this car though. It's like missing the year badge. It's clean, but it's not that clean. It doesn't have the plate on the back for DBT. It's missing plastic on the floorboard. This car probably is being demo. So one of the managers probably driving around or something. Not sure exactly what they're doing with this car, but it's not ready for photos. But they parked over. It's kind of clean, also kind of not. So it's a little uh, wishy-washy on that. Um, today I am. <laughs> What's going on? No, no, we're with the photo company. Yeah. Yeah, it's us. Alright. 1498. So the main thing I'm looking for right now is cars without labels. How come we don't have labels in that picture? Um, could have been maybe we ran out. We could be going back and doing them. They could have been taken down. A lot of different reasons. But... It's important to make sure they all got labels regardless so that is what we'll be doing so i'm going through and batching this this dealership actually gets a lot of labels compared to most most dealers most dealers they might get you know two labels a window sticker or what i call a veil a buyer's guide um this dealership gets four uh veil stands for vehicle equipment list by the way um, this dealership gets, ah, this thing's got tints, <laughs> yep, see the tint's so dark on this thing you can't even tell it's got labels or not, but it does, fortunately. Um, this dealership gets four labels, you got the addendum plus the window sticker and two buyers guys with the as is Spanish and English labels. Uh, one, two, three, seven. Any car that needs photos, I'm screenshotting. So I just punch it in. 
because if it needs labels, I'll just batch them as I go. But if it needs photos too, I, I know, I mean, I need a couple bodyguards too. You got any bodyguards? <laughs> Already. Oh boy. My general profile is low key. I don't like, I'm not a, a flash kind of guy. I like staying under the radar. That's more my thing. One, four. We got a half a day left to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I just can I get a, at least three. I could do more, technically. Uh, but uh, three that I want to hit today. Of course. It's good solitude, you know? I always liked, I like the solitude. Usually people don't really bother you much. Just go out there, do your thing, talk to the managers occasionally, you know, during the day when you're at the dealership, check in, check out. But most of the day, it's just, you know, out here. Watch the ledge. It's a quick way to ruin a $4,000 camera setup. <laughs> Falling off that ledge and that camera goes flying. Thank you. Uh, technically, no, because we background. I technically do, uh, but you don't have to. And I probably won't because of the backgrounding. The staging is over there, but the, over there is the entrance of the used car section. So you can easily get in the way of people. And people don't like it when you're in the way. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So that does happen. You don't want to be in the way when people are trying to drive in and out of a section of cars. Certified. But you know. I don't blame them. I always tell trainees, you know, when you gotta sit, when you're at a key machine or something, you're pulling a bunch of keys, and a sales guy comes up at, behind you, just, you know, pull your keys and let them go. Because they can't pay us if they don't sell cars. <laughs> and car sales guys, that's what they're doing. They're selling the cars, so they're more important than us as far as what they do. I think so. I see any of the cars. I might check the uh, the front up there too. See what they got. Not certified. There too. Now that we bashed about a hundred labels. <laughs> I got a list, a screenshot of cars, also that you know I'm gonna try to pull keys for that need photos. See how that goes, and uh, keep rolling. You see here, this is one of the few dealers we actually do new car denims at too. Um, I think those are new cars. Yeah, they're new cars. We don't do that very often at many dealers. New car, new car. But. Okay. All key machines, pretty simple. Standard setup, check in, check out. Um, always get a login. Just a couple of shortcuts. For example, on a, on a key track like this, uh, shortcut is using the percentage sign. And I'll give you a filtration of keys. One, three, four, eight. So you don't have to type in the whole giant stock number anyways. Six, four, two, four. So that one's not here. Three, four, three, five. That she so all right cool got them all except one i'm pretty sure the one that we didn't get was the one that the uh detail reporter was parking up front so he's probably got the key on him which we can try to get later it wasn't it came up as not found in the machine at all so if it's not found in the machine at all it means it hasn't been programmed uh, in the machine as of yet but we got three out of four. Uh, actually, on this one. Sorry, just looked at something. That's, that thing's gonna be a pain to get in and out of the car with. Another little trick, uh, trick of the trade is if you got cars like this, 
that you can tell are keyless in a car like this that's not keyless, you can put, like if you know where these cars are, which they're easy as the CRZ and the, uh, the Subaru. If you know they're keyless entry and keyless ignition, you can just put them in your done pocket. You don't have to worry about them because you kind of know where they are. So yeah, this thing, it's clean. This thing's dirty, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, clean. Let me see this thing real quick. No, no, it's not this one. It needs labels though. This kind of makes it look dirty because detail kind of half-assed the window here. <laughs> you can see it had the, the manager's T on it, which is their, their trade and they put a little four box square they do all the write-ups on it. Saint six certified. So, so if I then um, Spanish, English, and TPO. Okay, this one I have to hold for later. I'm not sure what we're gonna do about that. You go over there. So the first one, Subaru. Um, next one's gonna be the Honda. And last, the Toyota. Not sure where that is. Uh, he's over there. But um, yeah, all you gotta do is uh, hop in. Standard process is normal. As if we were walking around outside, pull it up in the in the uh, app. So, a lot of times, if it's a unique brand, like uh, you know, Subaru is not going to be too common at a Toyota dealer. So, I'll just type in Subaru to filter out the uh, results. I could be a little more specific and type in a scent, but I don't think Subaru is that common, so it's easy enough to figure it out. Whoop! Phone call. Hold on one sec. Hey, Javi, what's going on? Okay. So, that was a phone call about mergers and acquisitions, essentially. Uh, but Javier said that a dealership, one of my contact info that we currently have, a dealer that we currently have, and they want to reach out to me. Um, now, he said that the dealer is currently being purchased by um, actually two dealers that they own, the, both the Esserman dealers, and also the and also. which would be an exceptional amount of mergers and acquisitions activity, purchases. Buying spree lately, by the way, delete out every name I just said. <laughs> just in case you're wondering, you can include, you can include Lithia if you want. Um, but due to legal concerns, on all mergers and acquisitions, they do not like it if you talk about them until those deals are closed. And that new sign is up on the building. Well, definitely not the new sign, but you know, they get their letterhead done, let's put it that way. Because <laughs> if it's not done, people get very touchy about m and Also call it a uh, buy, buy sells. Dealers buy and sell dealers a lot more common than normal. Nowadays, they're buying and selling a lot of dealers. Not sure why, there's a lot of uh, concentration of dealership ownership. So, I finished this car. I'm loading the photos into the app now. Now most people shoot the cars um, 
in the app so they can skip that step. This Corolla is... What's that? Well, I, when I train, I show people how to shoot in the app. I generally, specifically, only shoot in the app. Myself, personally, I don't because I'm used to the tempo of the actual phone camera. It has a quicker shutter, so it snaps pictures a little faster. And if you, oh, sorry, wrong car. <laughs> Going to the Honda. But if you, uh, if you have a certain tempo over many years, you know, and you're shooting at that tempo, a slight stutter in the tempo can throw you off a bit when you're actually shooting cars. You know, so if it takes a quarter second longer on my three quarter shots, and I'm kind of moving into my next shot, a quarter second could be me already in movement, which is going to throw off the whole photo, you know, and then I have to reshoot the car again. Now, I guess I could start using the app permanently and then just, uh, you know, get used to it like most things, uh, but I guess it's one of my downfalls. I still use the phone camera, though. Don't let anybody know that. <laughs> now you'll notice um, when I'm pulling these cars out, I pulled this one. But uh, so yeah, when I'm pulling these cars out, I'm pulling them like this, as you can see the direction of the car. Um, now there's a reason for that. It's because of the lighting. So sorry, I'm bashing labels for the car right now. But so the lighting here is better for photos generally. A little tighter car, but. If you look at the sun, I wouldn't do that with the camera. It won't be very good. But if you look at the sun, you look at the shadows on the ground, all right? The sun's on the passenger side. So for me, that's optimal if it's directly on the passenger side. Now, because, especially when you're shooting outside, because on your first shot, your first three quarter shots, uh, passenger side shot, right? It gives you good lighting on that first shot. These shots over here, it's not too bad. Now, obviously, it gets more strained earlier and later on in the day, right? Because the sun goes down, the shadows are longer, and the sun's a little harsher, and you get more glare. The sun's up midday like this, not too bad, you know? But I always kind of try to stage, when I'm outside anyways, with the sun on the passenger side. So I literally just be moving the car like this throughout the day. And eventually, towards the end of the day, the cars will be facing this way because the sun will be over there. Most all of our dealers are passenger side first, except for maybe the Sheehan's over here. Which are driver's side first, that's because of OEM requirements from uh, Cadillac. So we just kind of did all the Sheehan's like that because they have a Cadillac dealer. But, so if you look at the car here, you're going to get better sunlight on that first shot, which is super important. This other shot, it's a little shaded, but it's not that bad. But that first shot's the most important shot because when you go online and you go to that SRP page and the dealer's scrolling down or if they're on their back end syndication platform or in HomeNet, so if they're on Viata, let's say, and they're scrolling down their SRP page, all those cars are nice, well, well lit on the first photo and uh, same good three quarter angle shots. But also, a lot of people might say, why don't you have the sun in front of the car, right? Like why not just put the sun in front of the car and you have good sunlight on all the front shots, but then the back shots will have a little bit of shade. But the main reason you do that, or you don't do that, sorry, you don't put it on the front of the car is because if you do that, the sunlight's gonna creep into the cabin, the inside of the car. And the sunlight creeps into the inside of the car. It's a little hard, sorry. <laughs> if the sunlight creeps into the inside of the car, um, it's gonna start lighting you up. So if the sun's coming in through the windshield because it's over here and it's lighting you up in your hands, you're gonna catch a lot of glare on the instrument panels and like the navigation screens, backup cameras. So you're gonna see a lot of glare from either your hand or the sun itself hitting the camera. So you want to try to avoid that, especially if you get glare on like, let's say, let's say it lights up your face, you know, and you're sitting there shooting the navigation screen and all you see is a picture of your face in the navigation screen. 
You don't want that. <laughs> so, all right, last ones. And notice I'm going in a certain order. I almost always go in the same order because that's the photo set. I'll add on a couple shots that might be important, like down here's the USB. Um, now this car, it's a little annoying. You wanna come in? Check out the instrument panel. So you see here, one of the most important shots that you can get uh, of a car on the inside is the mileage shot. And a lot of cars here, like this car, has a door open sign. All right, so now this one's pretty easy to clear. Just hit the eye. So if you look up here now, you can see the miles and just shoot it. Um, a lot of cars can be really difficult, especially if you don't know cars. So you could be sitting here playing with every button on the front on the steering wheel, trying to figure out how to get the mileage so you can shoot it. And then a lot of people probably just give up. Um, trick of the trade, if you ever are in that position, just turn the car off. A lot of cars will just display miles when it's off or if you turn the accessories on and you restart it and generally always display miles. You can't figure it out anyways, but there's usually a button that will clear out the mileage on cars. Hondas are pretty easy because it's always just the I button. Uh, GMCs and American made domestics, they have a separate set of buttons on the dash up here that you can press, that'll clear it out too. Uh, let me go park this thing. I was saying, you probably don't want to drive as fast as me when you're parking, but also when you're parking cars, if you line them up side mirror to side mirror, you're getting pretty close to where you want to be as far as the noses being pretty similar in distance. Now, obviously, some noses are longer than others, you know? So like a Charger and a Genesis can be longer than a CRZ or, you know, I don't know, Lamborghini, it's short nose. Lamborghinis like this, because they're rear engine, right? Or technically mid engine. But, um, so kind of tough to park in row, but some are longer. So, but the best thing to do, most dealerships will put all the same cars next to each other for the most part. So all the RAVs will be next to each other, Corollas, Camrys, whatever you want to say. Yeah, so a lot of dealers, they put the same cars next to each other, so it's easy to line them up. Okay, just go side mirror to side mirror, easy to line up. Last one's at Tacoma. Uh, where, oh where? There it is. Okay. Easy enough. I'm probably not gonna do the, uh, the printing with you to conserve time. It's gonna take a while. There's a lot of stuff to print. It's that SR5 bad shot. A lot of stuff to print. Um, technically I could hit new cars, but there's really not much. There's no new cars, you know, anywhere. Whoops. That shot was blurry. Sick. So it's kind of a waste of time. Um, sometimes depends. If I if it looks blurry to me, I'll notice it. Cause when I'm looking through the actual the screen, I can see whether or not it's blurry or not. Yeah. You know? So it's pretty easy to tell. And some shots blur easier than others. Alright. This is good quality content. All we're doing is shoot cars. But yeah, you know, this is what we do all day, every day. This is the last one. So I said, I'm not going to print here just because 
I said, if I hook up the print right now, we're gonna be here the rest of the day. <laughs> there's just so many, there's so many labels of print, and I know it's gonna be complicated because there's so many different types of labels. So it's gonna take a minute to print all these labels out. I don't want to be bumbling around, you know, burning through labels on camera. <laughs> so we'll just keep it moving. Besides, we utilize all the daylight anyways, which we need to do to shoot cars, you know? And I can label up at the end or midday. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go park it. Maybe over here by the car. Excellent. I mean, generally you want to do around 10. Yeah, around there. You can do more depending on the kind of stuff or do less. For example, loop back or Pompano Beach, you can only do maybe maybe five, six cars an hour. Just because of the amount of work involved because they got to double up on the spins because of uh, uh, Car Bravo and, and Pell. So you kind of have to double up on that. So you got to do the car basically twice um, here. I'm only doing picks, so you should be able to do at least 10 an hour, you know, if you're just knocking out cars. If you're doing picks and spins, you want to do probably between 10, 5 and 10 an hour, you know, if you're fast, you know. I would say if you're doing just spins, technically, you should probably be doing more than 10 an hour. But I like to go on the low side because, you know, a lot of people, they just, you know, it's knocking out cars. But they're going at their own pace, you know, they're not really non-stopping it, you know. <laughs> It's a car you don't see that much, Fiat Pop. You know? Not very common. How do I look, Derek? Is it is this me? That's what I thought. You know, I thought it was. <laughs> Wish you had the convertible so I could drop her on you, yeah? You know? <laughs> All right, sweet ride. You know what it is? It's the racing stripe that does it, yeah. It's too clean. <laughs> I just don't make many of them. It's amazing that this company, of all the companies bought up all, all the OEMs, but you know, what are you gonna do? It's got the Abarth rims. Look at that. That's not an Abarth, though. The Fiat Abarths are like the, uh, you know, the M3s of uh, the Fiat world. It's got the little, it's got the little logo, but it doesn't. Is this isn't an Abarth? Yeah. It's got. Yeah, lower. I mean, if you look at the muffler itself, that ain't it. <laughs> yeah. I think the stripe is though. The rims look like they are, so they might just take the rims of the caps maybe. A lot of people buy those sports packages, you know, on regular cars. Try to make them look like uh, upgraded models. Some people get a little, uh, a little carried away. <laughs> Okay. Ah, good old Kodak. Quality family music. <laughs> All right, so, eh, drop that. Sweet. All right, so this is kind of a, a limited shooting here. Yeah, there's not a lot of things to shoot on this car. Unfortunately, so the photo set's gonna be a little bit smaller. All right, let me part this thing. All right, you'll notice also 
On our first shafts, we crank the front wheel. We crank it this way. So you can see the rim. If you ever crank the wheel and you see the tire, you cranked it the wrong way. You always want to use 2x zoom on your exterior shots. I use it on all my exterior shots. You can use it on however many you want. A lot of people just use it on their first exterior shot because that first shot is the most important shot, you know. But the reason why you do that is to avoid lens distortion. Yeah, it's really these uh, tires are a little messed up. Well, they're not messed up, but they uh, the tire shine on it's so new, it's still kind of white, like blotchy a little bit. So, give the tire shine like maybe an hour or so, it'll probably look better. But it just looks blotchy. But uh, yeah, the reason why you do the 2X zoom is to avoid lens distortion on the 1X zoom. So. When you do the 1x zoom, everything looks, or just the regular non-zoom, I guess you could say, uh, everything looks a little more rounder, you know, curved because of the lens distortion. But if you do the 2x zoom or more, everything kind of flattens out, you know, so it draws up the lines of the car a little better, makes it look more clean, more slick, which is what you want. You also notice when I get in these cars, I always leave my legs kind of out because if I put my legs in, I try to shoot these shots, you're gonna get my legs on everything. So I always kind of hop in like this. Although it looks like I kind of fell in, but there's a reason for the madness. And that's that. Um, that's about it. There's not a whole lot left to shoot on this one. Let's park it. When you do these cars, a dealership that has interior labels is leave the cars unlocked. Because if you lock the cars, you have to go get the keys to unlock the cars to put the labels on. And that's something that you don't want to do. And also, like I said, normally, I would just be doing the labels right now because also to avoid any possible issues of that. A lot of times throughout the day, someone might pull the keys to the car, look at the car. Some might just lock back the car. Some dealers are very, uh, it's the best word, anal about their lots as far as drop, locking the cars, not locking the cars. Um, they want the cars all locked up. So that's just the way they want it. So sometimes they'll have sales guys or porters walk around the lots just locking cars could be an issue if you try to, you know. Let me see how many new cars they have here. Oh, no, 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 we are not. <laughs> they have 132 cars on the list. They don't have 132 cars here. <laughs> not even close. Um, they got probably like 10 cars here, maybe. Of those 10, nine are done. <laughs> so, like the reason why I could tell is because if you look at the cars those addendums we put those addendums on the cars so when we do the car shoot the car put the addendum on the car you see all the cars have addendums that means we did all so normally what I would do for new cars is I'd do a key audit in the key machine but 123 cars missing photos most likely what the dealer is doing is putting their in-transit units online kind of drum up business a little bit you know because they don't have any cars on the ground so it inflates the numbers but you can't do photos on cars that aren't here. <laughs> That's the main issue. Um, so yeah, it's probably not gonna be much to do as far as new cars, so I won't burn our time on that. Uh, I guess we're gonna, uh, let's go to Sheehan, Buick GMC. Buick GMC? Yeah, Sheehan. It's um, that way about two miles south. Yes. So, Sheehan Autoplex. So there's Sheehan Cadillac, Sheehan Buick GMC, and Sheehan Autoplex. 
as shown by the sign over there. Um, but yeah, we're at Sheen Autoplex. This dealership is pretty simply laid out. Full sets or front line right here. And directly behind you, wholesale cars, pre-details, detail, pre-details. Most of the used cars for the Sheehan dealers actually come out of here, so they do have like a kind of like a funnel system, you know, they all get detailed here and they get spread out. Um, I believe. There is a detail department over there, but they mainly focus on the new cars, but it's not that many, they probably focus on used to. Um, now here, I will do an audit as well, key audit. But fortunately for us, I walked the dealership yesterday. So <laughs> instead of what we did at Toyota, we can avoid that here because I walked it last night and I know exactly what we got to do. Now they might have brought out maybe one or two cars, maybe, from last night till now. But most likely not. So I'm gonna flip dealers in my phone. She and Autoplex. Let's go this way. This is the camera. Wouldn't want you to lose my shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, used car is your 100 apply. This is your 10. Few, but some of them. Here, this is a keeper machine. It lights up when you got the keys you need and the lit up ones. Keys you don't need and don't light up. And when you put keys back, it's the exact opposite. All the uh, all the slots light up. All the ones with keys do not. Now there were a few cars. That weren't in here at all. Sometimes dealer key, dealers keep uh, keys on the bottom. But I'm thinking these are probably more for wholesale units. I figure out take a look just in case. Yeah, yeah, no. Nope, not there. Transit though, maybe. Five two zero on this one. I see this one, this one. Uh, so yeah, here we do photos and spins. Everything through the HomeNet app. When you're doing photos and spins, spins requires a little bit more hardware. So, you got the gimbal, got the Rika, and uh, quite a few keys. That's probably gonna be the 2019. Where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? Shit, that's the one. Okay. Let's try to get a little more organized. So, gimbal, Rico. Now, if I can find these other keyless cars. Sprinter, nice. Got a keyless key. I know where these are. I don't think they're keyless though, even with this key. At least not keyless entry anyways. I do not trust Sprinter's CMIM. I do not trust Sprinter's screen exit ham. Yukon. Yeah, that's the one up front. Now, Where's she at? I hear it. Can't see it though. So not sure. This one, I'll figure out where that's at. I know it's up over there though. So 
there we go. I kind of organized my keys to all the keyless ones. Uh, and I know where they are, which I hit all the alarms. So that Yukon, that terrain, that Mustang, that Yukon all the way down there. And two sprinters, which are over there. Um, and I got this transit. One of the Yukon somewhere over there. I'm sure I could find it, but I figured I'd be safe and put it in my not done pocket. So, worth, um, I think maybe, I'm not sure, probably eight, nine. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. Let's see, I'll tell you right now. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, should be about eight. Yeah. Okay, so spins. Turn the Rico on, put it inside. Let's find this bad boy here. 7088 services. Bill out the 15 stickers. Add a print queue. How many miles around this thing? 51,000. So he has this. Trucks. And uh, commercial vehicles like transits, you always want to double check the mileage because with warranty specifications, mileage has a lot to do with that. So the first things that trip up on trucks and commercial vehicles generally, it's going to be the mileage. So generally you want to wait five seconds, I hit the pano, it's going to shoot the interior shot. Rico. Transferring the photo, finish transferring the photo. Rico's done, gimbal on. I already do the video. So, if you look at it there, see if I double tap, that's the, the Rico. Took the interior shot of that, save it. Go to 360, super wide. And then we're just gonna do the video walk around of the car. A little close double tap the trigger stabilizes it and hit the record now the gimbal helps with stabilization but you don't want to walk too fast if you walk too fast it's not going to stabilize as much as you'd want it to All right, that's it. Turn the gimbal off. That's the full spin. Now we're gonna do the photos. The HomeNet Spin app will count to 360. So it'll count while you're going around. Nope, this is a Cadillac set. So it's a specific set for Cadillac OEMs. Now, this isn't a Cadillac dealer, technically. But the group has a Cadillac dealer. So to avoid confusion, we're just shooting the Cadillac set at all. You'll notice that the first shot was three quarter driver's side instead of passenger. all the exteriors um, it's not a lot a whole lot of not a whole lot of features on a transit so a lot of the photos are kind of consistent with the back of the vehicle So you get a lot of shots to the back. Uh, 
You always want to pull your equipment out before you shoot your shots in there. Or else it's going to look kind of sloppy. All your stuff on the seat there. You're going to wonder what's going on with the car. Why is all so much stuff on the seat? So this car, there you want to come in? If you look at the dash, actually, you can't even see it. Even if you wanted to, it's got a low tire light. So on stuff like that, you want to go straight into the miles and just shoot, you know. Yeah, like that shot would normally be a full gauge shot. If I zoomed all the way on the mileage just to get the mileage. You get low tire light, check engine lights, you know, stuff like that. You want to avoid that stuff for sure because a low tire light it's fixable the dealer will fix it there's no question you know so if you're trying to advertise someone to come and buy the car and has a low tire that's kind of a non-starter you know you might lose a lead for no reason because the dealer is going to fix the low tire before they sell it anyways same thing with a check engine light unless the dealer explicitly is selling it as is which i've had some dealers you know in the past they'll literally Put a sheet of paper on the dash right up here and it'll say as is and it'll list out every single repair you have to do to get it like basically in running shape that they won't pay for because they don't want to put the money into it but if you want to buy it as is you can buy it and here's a list of all the things that are wrong with it and you know, there you go like full transparency like that which is you know good for clients or customers for sure all right that's it part this one so same thing on this one too first thing you do turn your Rico on set it up in the middle here buttons facing out I usually like to open up the sunroof it's got a DVD player in the back too I like to open that up just for full visibility of all the actual selling features of the car because you know those are important on a car a lot of dealers will uh, a lot of dealers will make sure or want you to make sure that you actually shoot those shots like you know sunroof navigation DVD players backup cameras third row seats uh, all that stuff sometimes lane assist or even um, if you're trying if you uh, like kind of swerve out of lanes those kinds of things they want you to shoot all that stuff because those are the selling features of the car and if you're looking online and a car is priced you know maybe a thousand two thousand more than another car and you say oh well it looks exactly the same it may not be exactly the same so they want to make sure that you get those extra shots or else they could lose out on a potential sale because of all those extra options on the car. So, same thing here. Bounce factory, capture 360. It's connecting to the camera. One, two, three, four, five. I generally wait five seconds, like I was saying before, because that's how long it takes to transfer to actually take the photo. The rest of the time should be transferring the photo. So unless it does that, <laughs> which is um, sometimes you get a little click, a little beep. That means I actually shot the photo while I was standing here. Um, sometimes it doesn't connect correctly like that. So I actually have to retake it. I, usually, I should wait for the preview to show up. So let me retake it real quick. Put that there. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so should have shot it. The rest should be transferring. Yep, yeah, there you go. And done transferring. So, uh, okay. Save, go into the video, turn this bad boy on.
was wondering where you were. <laughs> Forgot because these uh, these spins, it's a lot easier to get you in the background. All right. That's that and that. I usually put the gimbal and the Rico in the passenger seat of the passenger front seat because generally I never get anything in the passenger front seat in any of my shots in my photo set so it's kind of easy to hide stuff there and just pick them up easily afterwards Try not to force auto doors. If you do, kind of grind their gears and the doors get really upset at you. They fight back. All day. I also like to get a shot of this too, the running boards. I usually do it like that, like a quick shot before they go back up. Third row seats, super important. Overhead shot. Shot of the sunroof, shot of the DVD player. Now this has two DVD players, so I might do like more of a, a macro shot because they get both the DVD players. Uh, yeah, this is it. All day. Knocking out cars. A lot of cars are shooting. But if you're quick and you're efficient with it, you can make pretty good money doing it. Let's see here. Like how long have we been going now, Derek? 20 minutes. Well, here, yeah, for sure. Today, probably what, two hours? Ah, probably, maybe less. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, two hours. Yeah, two hours. Um, yeah, we're at about buck. What are we at here? Oh, hold on. Yeah, we're about 200 bucks. So, you know, we're, yep, right on track. Even with the drive, too, because you got to drive between dealers. That's where you want to be. 23, one, two. Okay. Right, let me go park this thing. All right. Never been a backpack guy. I don't like carrying much more than my pants. <laughs> You know, you gotta reach into the backpack. You gotta find somewhere to put the backpack unless you're wearing it, which is all good too. But you know, if you're wearing it and you sit in a car, if you have something important in there, you'll probably crush it. Or at least some of my size will crush it. <laughs> I don't know about some of the smaller guys we got working. All right, cool, let's go. Sometimes the Rico has a little bit of issue connecting, depending on how much battery's in it, or how close it is. Some cars I've even noticed have like more like blocking capabilities, I guess you could say, for the Wi-Fi connection. I get out of them, it doesn't even read it anymore sometimes. This should be good though. Yep. I always turn my Rico off right after it's done too. Because it saves battery. The Rico, is, the Rico will be one of the first things that dies out here. For sure. Gimbal, lasts all day. Probably do over 100 cars with the gimbal. 
I haven't charged this thing in days. I still got a full battery. Even though I'm doing a ton of spins. Actually, I probably haven't charged this thing in weeks. <laughs> got the speed on you there. There you go. But, um, but yeah, the Rico, first thing to die. So I always turn it off right after I'm done using it. And it'll last me days too. If you don't, it'll last you maybe 20 cars. And we are done. Sprinter? Selling it? Which one? One, two, three, one, two, five, three, two? Five, three, two. Yeah. So put it over here. Is it sold? No. Trying to sell. Oh, yeah. Alright, cool. Thanks. Listen to great music while you're on the lot sometimes. Yeah. You know? Set the mood a little bit out here. This one's all done. Yeah, photos and spins, about that. So that's why I always say, you know, the uh, the amount of time I say you should be spending on a car is a little, I usually overestimate how many cars someone, actually sorry, underestimate how many cars someone will do an hour. The guy's telling you maybe like what, five to 10 cars with photos and spins an hour. You know, but if I can do a car every five minutes, technically I should all do what, 12, give or take, I think, yeah? A math. Yeah, they actually, uh, they tricked it out a little bit. They tried to put paddle shifters in it too. <laughs> so, uh, I can. Generally, I don't on cloth tops, just because they're so visible. Hard tops are a little bit more invisible, so you might drop those. Cloth tops are a little more visible, so I usually don't drop it on those. It's kind of like, can you see the feature? Can you not see the feature from everything else? And also, especially when you start messing with tops, and you see the lines in this one, right here? Looks like it's been down a lot, you know? Because it's kind of like creased. So, you never know <laughs> when you start messing with tops. Because sometimes, 
they're fine. Sometimes you're in for a world of trouble. <laughs> Just depends. And some tops are super tricky to actually work anyways. Hard tops are pretty simple. Cloth tops can be tricky. Cloth tops on Wranglers are impossible. Well, they're not impossible, but they're, those are tricky. I just don't know how to use them that much because I don't rarely ever drop a, a convertible or a top on a Wrangler, as you can say. Very rare. Most things I don't believe pop from the back. Well, if anybody can ever figure it out, let me know. I never actually had a Mustang pop from the back. Let's see, where is this one? Ah, there it is. Oh, got some kickers in here too. Yeah, somebody spent some money on this thing. That's for sure. All for nuts. I'm kind of curious though. When they trade this into a dealership, that the dealer actually gives them any extra cash for the kickers in the trunk. I doubt it. Because, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's about convenience, you know? For the guy selling the car, is it more convenient just to say, fuck it, I'm going to give it to the dealership too? Or to try to sell those things, you know, <laughs> on an app, which could be a nightmare. Obviously, the guy that sold the car doesn't need them anymore, so. All right. Want to see the top operation? There she is. Let's see if she works. Does she work? Sweet. Yeah, let's grab a couple. Let's grab a couple shots. Why not, right? Just stay on this side. If you can see or not? Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Overhead shot of yeah you know, the cabin without the uh, top on. When I do, when I do take the tops down, I like to get that shot and just a couple shots to the outside. A lot of top on. Okay, let me put it back. Depends. <laughs> For a Rico, sure are. Um, so, the reason why these can be considered harder is because the amount of physical work you gotta do with them. You know, you gotta climb up, climb down. On a video, you gotta walk further around. On photos, you gotta stand further back to get the whole, the whole truck in, you know? Um, so, in that sense, you can consider them more difficult to shoot. Uh, also, you know, when you're driving them, if you don't know how to drive a truck like this, well, not even a truck like this, but you know, even bigger trucks too, 
don't know how to drive bigger trucks or trucks like this, it's much easier to wreck them <laughs> or get in accidents, you know? Because they don't have, you know, there's a lot of blind spots on trucks like this. Thank you. That's print Q. All right. Like, did I? I did not do my Rico yet. My bad. One sec. One, two, three, four, five. See, I like, you saw when I was backing it up and then I moved it forward a little bit because there wasn't a ton of room. You need a lot of room on the sides on trucks like these. So that's why I kind of reversed it. I was mainly didn't have enough room over there. So I pulled it up here because I can get around the Mustang. You got like another 30 minutes? Yeah. Well, it's 2.30, right? Or is it 2? 2. 2? Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. You're out of here. Our day goes by so quick. Especially when I'm here and you're holding your 20-pound piece of equipment all day. What you gotta do to the... Well, this thing's tricked out, look at that. Definitely an Amazon truck. Most likely. Well, no Amazon truck expert though. So I'm just guessing that. But the colors, the insides are kind of a dead giveaway. Nah, I don't know. I mean, that looks like package carrying and stuff like that, but man, I could definitely be wrong. You know what I found interesting about Amazon though? Is that they got a deal, or a lot of their trucks in the beginning were Mercedes Sprinters. I was like, why, why would they buy a bunch of Mercedes? Yeah, I mean, how much money these guys got? <laughs> that again, I'm not sure of a Mercedes Sprinter, you know, costs a lot more than a Ford Transit, you know what I mean? I, it probably doesn't. I haven't really looked at the, the prices lately. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. But I assume they had a great deal with Mercedes because most of their trucks in the beginning were Sprinters. I don't even think they have any Transits. Then you got the Dodges, I forget what they're even called. Promaster, yeah. Ah, Derek, you know more than me. <laughs> you know cats. That's all you gotta know out here. <laughs> all right, let me part this thing. This is what we do every day out on the field. Uh, we work, we shoot the cars, we work at dealerships. You know, we get to meet a lot of people, and uh, we get to shoot a lot of cars. And it's pretty serene out here. You know, you get to, you, no one's really on you. No one's really. As long as you do your work, you do your job. You know, and every car gets shot. Everything goes great. It's a very stress-free job. Stress, stress-free job. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. As long as you can handle the sun, uh, that's that's about all you got to worry about. <laughs>